All right. So now to continue the rigging, we're gonna uh, adding a few stuff to get started. So uh, first of all, let's get to the front view by pressing one on the numpad. And uh, first of, you know what? Let's do a few things here first. So I'm gonna take this piece over here, all right? And I'm gonna go into edit mode, like this. And I'm gonna select all of these objects here, not that one. These two over here. Let me just zoom in and make sure I have the right one selected. Yeah, so we're gonna take those two, including the uh, boat and knot right here. And uh, we're gonna press P and separate the selection. Now I'm gonna take this one and we're gonna join it to this one by pressing Control and J to make them one object like that, as you can see. All right, so I think uh, that is all we need to do to get started. All right, so to begin, what we're going to do is we're going to click on this piece over here, right? And then we're going to go into edit mode, select this circle over here, press shift and S and choose Kezza to select it. So we're going to add in some uh, empties in uh, some places that we need it, all right? So if, you wanna be, if you're going to be rigging a vehicle, it would be necessary to be using empties instead of uh, the actual uh, object. Uh, to add in what I mean is if you're going to add in a constraint okay to to any piece of object in here It would be best to use an empty instead of uh, Directly using the uh, object you know what I mean once we get this started So let's get into front view and I want to press shift in a and add in an empty We're gonna add in a plane axis like this. So I'm gonna scale this down to some small size I think that should be good. I want to press ctrl and a and apply the scale not that it really matters But I just want to all right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to get to this side as well. Let's go into edit mode and uh, I'm going to add in a loop cut over here right on the surface right here over here like this. And I'm going to press shift and S and choose Kezza to select it. Now I'm going to get rid of that loop cut. I didn't really need it. So so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press shift and A and add in another plane axis. And uh, let me just reset the rotation by pressing Alt and R. And I'm going to scale this down to some small size as well. So I think that should be enough so we can see it from this side. I'm going to press Ctrl and A and apply the rotation and scale. Sorry. Let's apply the scale first. Then we apply rotation and scale. All right. Now, before we actually continue, I want you guys to know, uh, before adding in the empties and everything, besides the plane here, let me hide the plane. Everything else you're seeing here, I selected everything and then parented it to this uh empty over here so if I move this you can see everything is moving along with it that's because I took everything and imprinted it to the empty here with control P so it would be best to do that as well so before we move on I'm going to take these two empties here and I'm going to parent them as well to this empty over here by pressing control and P and I'm going to click on object and keep the transformation <clears throat> now you can select object but it would be best to go with object to keep transformation what that means is uh, it's going to parent to this object without altering the transformation of this piece here, of the child here. So if you actually go with just object, there might be some changes made to this empty here. So be careful of, of what you choose. All right, so I'm gonna add in an empty at another place. Now these two objects, these two empties here are uh, parent to this, to this cube over here, that is the, the empty cube. So if we duplicate any empties from this empties that we already have going on, they should be parented to the object as well. So I'm going to duplicate this by pressing Shift and D, and I'm going to move it up here like this. So I'm going to go over to the top view, and I'm just going to scale this up, okay? So it goes right through the uh, piece we have over here, this piece over here. So I'm just going to move this to this side like this. I think it falls right on it in the center like that. And I'm going to pull this. Okay, maybe I should just leave it there, but I'm just going to pull it up a bit. Something like this, I think should be good. A little bit more down. Just like that. And I'm going to rotate this in the x-axis until it falls right in the center of both sides. So you can see from the knot, it's not really in the center, but we'll fix that soon. All right, so we're going to move that in the x-axis until it falls in the center. And I'm pretty sure this time it has. All right, so there we go. So we're going to apply the scale and then rotation and scale. All right, so just like that. Oh, no, no, no. Don't apply the rotation. Just apply the scale. If you apply rotation, it resets the uh, transformation of, I mean, the transformate the rotation of the object. All right, so let's move on. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this piece over here as well, and I'm going to duplicate it in a Z axis all the way to here. So let's just try to make it on the same level as this empty over here. So I'm going to pull it down just a bit, just to make it quite the same level as that one over there. All right, nice. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, let me see. 
let's take this piece over here, right? Let me save this real quick. We're going to take this piece over here and now we're going to add in a constraint to this piece. So let's go over to the constraints tab over here. Just click on this to get to the constraint tab and let's add a new constraint. Now the constraint we're going to add in is a lock track. You can see it right here. So just select a lock track. Most of the constraints that we're going to be using is lock track, track two and a uh, transformation and maybe some limit location, limit rotation and uh, maybe something like that. So yeah, let's get on with this. So we're going to add in a lock track on this object all right so we're going to lock the track what this means is we're going to track to a specific object and lock it in a specific axis all right so this is the axis we're going to be locking it in and obviously we want to lock it in the y axis in this case all right so let's lock it in the y axis and we're going to track it we're going to track it to this empty over here and this empty is on the x axis of it so we're going to lock it i mean we're going to track it in the x axis to this empty over here so we're just going to take a look at the name of the empty and I think it's empty 002 when you take a look down here. So we're just going to select that and we're going to look for empty 002. So you can see instantly it tracks to it. Now if we move this up and down, you can see it's tracking to it very nicely like that. So now all that we have to do is to take this piece over here, this object here. First let me set the origin. Let me set the origin to this 3D case over here. So I'm just going to click this, type the spacebar or you can find it in here. Just click on object. And select uh should be in here somewhere the set origin yeah right here so set origin to 3d kessa not that it really matters but i just want to do that to make it uh you know a bit whatever so let's get on with this <clears throat> now i'm going to take this piece and i'm going to parent it to this empty over here with Control p i'm going to keep the transformation just like that all right so now if we move this up and down you can see that that uh, drive shaft actually follows it up and down like that all right, so that is the first thing. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this piece over here, all right, this one, and then uh, we're going to add in another lock track to this one as well. So lock track, we're going to lock it in the Y, and we're going to track in the X, just like the first one. And I'm going to click on this eyedropper tool here, and we're going to select this empty over here, which is empty 004. So it tracks to it just like that. Now, all that we are going to do now is to take this and then parent it to that empty with Control P and keep the transformation. Now, if we move this up and down, you can see this follows as well. All right. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take this piece here and we're going to set the origin to, to this area over here, to the center over here. Right now, the origin is in the uh, the origin of the world. So we're going to move that over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece over here. That is just that face over here. I'm going to press Shift and S and choose Kesa to select it. And I'm going to press the space bar type and set origin. Again, you can find it in the objects tab. So I'm just going to select set origin i want to set it to the, to the 3d kessel like that so the origin is right here so you'll know why i actually did that very soon but before we actually do anything else let's uh continue i'll explain to you why i moved the 3d i mean the uh, origin point to this point right here all right so before we move on let's get on to the side view let's take this tie over here i'm going to press shift and s and choose kessel to select it and i want to add in an empty circle right here I'm going to press Alt and R to reset the rotation, and I'm going to rotate it in the Z axis by 90 degrees, like that. And I'm going to scale this down to about the size of the tire. Let's just move it out a bit to about the side of the tire, like that. Alright, so uh, we're going to apply the scale, and let me see. Okay, let's not apply the rotation, just the scale, like that. Let me rotate this in the Z axis so the Y axis is facing the other direction, like that. Alright. So what we're going to do is we're now going to take these two empties here. That is this one and two. And we're going to parent it to this object here. So we're going to press Ctrl and P and parent it to the object and keep the transformation. Now once we do that, first of all, you remember we parented these two objects to this cube over here. But now that we've given it a new parent, it's, gonna, it's not going to be parented to this up, uh, cube here anymore. So here's what's going to happen. You can see those two... Uh, empties are still over there and they are not moving because this one is not parented to the cube so let's do that right now so we're going to take that one and then parent it to this and then we're going to keep the origin i mean keep the transformation so now these two are parented to this object and this object is parented to the cube so all of them should move together with the cube like that all right so now if we move this up and down you can see both objects are moving up and down with it just like that now what we're going to do next is we're going to take this piece here I want to parent it to this object over here. All right, so just select this piece, parent it to this object with Control P, and keep the transformation. Now, if we move this up and down, you can see it's working quite well, but not so much for this piece over here. There's something going on with it. 
so we need to fix that obviously it needs to be straight up and down that is it needs to keep vertical like this okay so that is when this actually comes in this is the reason why i put the uh, origin of the object over here so all that we're going to do now is to let's press shift and s and choose keser to select it all right so we want to keep this vertical as the uh the two objects go up and down like this okay so we want to keep this vertical we don't want it to rotate like it is right now we just want to keep it vertical and you're going to know what i mean soon once we f fix it so first of all i'm going to put the keser here to that origin point and i'm going to press n over here in where the top says 3d keser we're going to move the location of the 3d keser something to something around here all right so let's just drop that down to somewhere around here all right so you can see that is actually very vertical to the uh, what do you call it? The origin point of this object here is straight up and down. All right, you can see right here. If I use the ruler, you can see straight up and down to that origin point of that object. So all that we're going to do now is we're going to take this object here. I want to set the origin to that 3D chasm. So now the origin is very perpendicular from top to bottom, like that. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take this piece. I want to add in a lock track to this as well. And this time we're, gonna, we're not going to be tracking to an empty, we're going to be tracking to this object over here, alright? So we're going to track to that object, and we're going to lock it in the Y axis. Is it the Y? Yeah. And I want to track in the Z axis, like that, alright? So now if we take this piece and then we move it up and down, you can see it's keeping it vertical. And then also since it's uh, tracking to that object up there, it's just staying there like that. So you can see that it, that was an easy fix, just like that. Alright. So now all that we're going to do next is to, uh, what is next? Let me take a look at this. Let me rotate this in the Z axis. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let me rotate again. Okay. So I think we need to add in some empties in these areas. Let's get down here. All right. So let's take this piece over here. Let's go into edit mode. I'm going to take this face over here. Come on. Face selection. Yeah, there we go. So we're going to take this one and then take that one. I want to press shift and S and choose because actually, you know what? Let's not put let's not put it over here. Let's put it here instead. So let's go in here. I'm going to go back to vertex select mode. I'm going to select this edge over here. I'm going to press shift and S and choose Kezza to select it like that. And I'm going to press shift and A and add in an empty. You know, let's just duplicate this one right here since there's no constraint added to it. So I'm just going to press shift and D, move it to some point here and press shift and S and choose selection to Kezza like that so i'm just going to scale this down a bit apply the scale and apply rotation and scale all right so i'm going to move up here as well i'm going to select this face choose keza to select it i'm just going to duplicate this one as well shift and s selection to keza so it moves it all the way up there like that all right nice so what we're going to do next is uh let me see we are going to parent this empty here to this object here all right so we're just going to take this one and then take that one press ctrl and p and an object keep transformation so if we rotate it that uh what do you call it that empty moves along with it like that all right nice so all that we're going to do next is to take the tire the whole tire and we're going to parent it to uh to this piece i think yeah so i'm going to parent it to that one with ctrl p and keep the transformation so if we rotate it you can see the tire moves along with it very nicely like that all right cool so what we're going to do next is uh with this piece parented to this i think i'm going to take this one and parent it to that empty here i'm going to press control you know what? let's take the both of them and parent it to this piece instead with control p and keep the transformation now all that i'm going to do now is to press alternate to bring the main body now i'm going to go down here it's not going to be that visible but we're gonna try our best. Where am I right now? Okay. You know, let me hide. Let me hide the main body first. So I'm gonna take this piece here and the empty right on top of it like that. And I'm gonna press alternate to bring the body. So those two should be selected along with the body. All right. So select the main body, make it the active selection, and press Control and P, and parent it to the object and keep the transformation. So those two should be parented to the object. When you move it, you can see it moves along with it. If you take a look down here, you can see it moves along with it down there like that all right so we're going to hide that piece now now all that we're going to do is let's get over here and uh what we're going to do is we're going to add in a track to constraint to this but first off let me get over here all right so i'm going to click here press shift and s keser to select it press the space bar and set the origin to 3d keser and i'm going to do the same thing for this one 
this piece. Okay, it's already there, so we don't need to do it again. All right, so we're going to take this piece now, and we're going to add in a track to constraint, not a lock track. So what a track to what makes track to different from a lock track is that a track to constraint actually uh, sort of uh, what do you call it? It tracks to the object in all sort of axes. Uh, and um, let me show you what I mean. So we add in a track to constraint to this, and we're going to track to this empty over here, the one on top of that piece over there, like that. So we're going to be tracking in the z-axis. And sorry, not the z-axis. Is it the z-axis? Yeah, it's the z-axis. But uh, let me see. I think we need to change this to some. Uh, let me see. I don't quite remember. I think. Yeah, we're gonna track in the z-axis. So you can see this this thing here is still red, and that is because the uh, what do you call it? The what do you call it? The value here. I don't know what this stands for, but. These two here, this one right here, and that one should not be the same axis. You, you, you're just going to have to change this to some different axis here instead of the Z axis. And instantly that should fix it. So now what that does is if we if we take the empty now and we move it, you can see that it tracks to that empty in whatever direction that we move it. So it's not locking it in any specific axis, but it's tracking to it in every direction. And that is what we want to use for this. All right. So if I go back here, you can see... That is actually tracking to it very nicely and i want to track in the local space all right not the world space now what what the difference between a, the difference between a world space and a local space is that the uh the world space when when i how do i explain this let me add in a cube real quick all right so this is the cube we've added in let me just rotate it randomly like that all right so right now the local space this this axis you're seeing here is the axis of the local space all right so if i change this to the world space which is the global you can see the world space has the z-axis in this direction, but the local space, it has the z-axis in this direction instead. So sort of a local global kind of thing, like local means it's, it's only for the object and global means it's for everyone, if you know what I mean. Something like that. If you, I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say, but that's the best I can do. All right. Uh, where were we? I think, yeah. So you just change it to local space like that and... If you track it, you can see it still tracks it very nicely. So all I want to do now is to do the same thing with this piece here. So we're going to add in a track to constraint to this. I want to track to this empty down here. Empty 006, is that it? Yeah. And I want to track it in the Z. Change the axis to whatever axis. Hold on. Let me put this off. Okay, so we want to track in. You can see the, the, the axis going down here is actually the X axis, not the Z axis. So let's bring this back to Z and let's change this to an X. All right. Just like that. Now if we move this, you can see, is it is it working? Did I select the right? Hold on, let me see. It doesn't seem to be working. Oh, okay, I disabled it. Let's re-enable that. I disabled it with the eye icon. So now if we move this, you can see it follows it very nicely like that. All right, cool. So let's take this, and let's move it up and down. And uh, you can see... That is working very nicely, but I'm spotting a few issues here. And that is uh, this piece over here is not tracking. Why is it not tracking? It should be tracking. Let me see. Uh, okay. Let me add in that constraint again, the track to constraint. And uh, I'm going to track in a Z. Let's change this to X. Let me select that empty again. Now let me take a look. All right. So you can see that actually made a difference. Now, it what I actually did was uh, I actually added in the constraint before parenting it to this empty before. Now, if you do that, it can give you some issues. What you want to do is first parent it to the necessary uh, parent you want to parent it to before actually adding in the constraints because that actually fixes a lot of issues because you can see that actually helped here like that. So you can see they're both tracking very nicely. All right, cool. So this is where I'm going to end the first part of the video because I think the video is getting too long. Hopefully this is only a five-part video. I'm pretty sure of it. Or maybe a video less or something like that. But this is where I'll end the video and I'll see you guys in the next video where we'll be working. Uh, we'll be continuing this and uh, working on everything else. So yeah, see you guys in the next video.